All right, I think now is a good time to get started. So welcome everyone to the September 11th, uh, 2023 SIG storage meeting. Um, I've got the agenda shared so you guys can see that. And our first topic is from Arnon. So if you're ready, why don't you go ahead and introduce that? Cool. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, both topics are about uh, around the storage profiles. First one is regarding a PR uh, posted about a month ago. Uh, just as a just as a toy or something, but it uh, evolved a bit since then. Since then, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, currently uh, we move toward the uh, populators, and uh, uh, we currently I think the only thing that is not covered. Uh, is the uh, DV uh, ability to uh, fill in uh, the PVC spec missing uh, fields according to our uh, storage profiles. Uh, to those who don't know what storage profiles is, uh, it's basically kind of a table, uh, which is, uh, most of it is the, uh, is Build uh, uh, by us uh, long long time. It's a list uh, which is uh, the key is the uh, storage class or storage provisioner, and uh, uh, it recommends the settings, the volume mode and access mode combinations, and also the recommended the uh, uh, clone uh, strategy. If it's snapshot, snapshot or CSI clone or a, a host assisted clone, uh, that's what the storage profile give us. But uh, currently, it was supported only uh, when you use the uh, data volume. Now, what I added in this uh, compact uh, PR is a PVC uh, mutating webhook, uh, which is simply calling the rendering uh, function which was used by our, our data volume controller for uh, doing the for filling in the missing fields based on the based on the storage profiles so you can see in the example below that you can just uh, put a pvc spec put pvc yaml uh, with the label with the use storage profile and you don't need to put a volume mode for example in an access mode uh, currently, you still need to put the auto label. There is an explanation uh, in the lines above. Uh, it's because of the Kubernetes default uh, volume mode, which is always a uh, file system. Um, so, in this PR, uh, in order to test that it works, all the uh, PVCs are created using this uh, label. So, we cover all PVCs, all, uh, all uh, PVC creation flows using this uh, uh, mutating webhook. Uh, now, there was some interesting uh, chat in the PR itself. Uh, there were some uh, questions raised. I think uh, most of them uh, are in the bottom, uh, mostly by David Vasso and uh, Alexander. Uh, and I also had uh, some uh, initial initial uh, rejections from uh, Michael, which I'd like him to expand about. Uh, so currently, it's all about this label, and uh, as noted in the uh, in our six storage uh, doc, we can switch back to it. Um, currently, the webhook intercepts only explicitly CDI label PVC. So uh, in case CDI API server is down, there is no effect on the cluster stability and no other PVCs will be touched. Okay. Now, uh, Michael, uh, init Michael's initial command was uh, that at minimum, we need to have a feature gate, which is okay, uh, on the deployment and the labeling of the PVC. I'd like to hear your uh, 
feedback on this uh, idea, uh, looking for it, uh, mostly for it, uh, cons. Okay, thanks for the intro. Um, any comments from anyone? Have you seen the PR? Um, anyone want to bring anything up here? Um, I guess the one I'll start with a question. So for the idea of intercepting only the explicitly labeled PVCs, um, is it required for those PVCs um, so that you don't have to check if it was actually applied? Um, so if you apply the label and the PVC yes. is successfully created, you know the webhook worked on it. Uh, yep, I know. Because the, the webhook is created as required. Okay. And the PVC, uh, actually the PVC creation will fail if uh, some of the, at least one of the uh, mandatory fields will be missing. Okay. Okay. Wait, so the webhook is required? Yep, there was a discussion with uh, David Vossel. It's required for the uh, for the only for the CDI labeled the PVCs. But at the webhook, at the um, on the Kubernetes level, it's required. So creating the PVC will fail if the webhook's down. Uh, we need to, uh, I was uh, discussing it with uh, David Vossel. You can see the discussion there. Uh, the creation currently, at least with the current setting of the webhook, uh, will uh, fail. Uh, I, I added the link in the, in the PR itself. Let's open it. It's quite a uh, few lines discussing it. I think it's uh, here. This one? Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you can open the link below. Hold on a so second. Abilities. Sorry, I'm fighting the, the Zoom uh, bar that's in exactly the location where I need to click the tab. Uh, this one, or was it a different link? Uh, I think it is. Let's scroll down. So I don't. Yeah, well, let's what make is, sure we don't. Uh, if we know where it is quickly, we can try to answer. Uh, you can look for failure. Uh, you can look for the string which which appeared in uh, PR itself. It's uh, citation from the. Failure policy. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, so what yeah, I would say, like maybe we should take this as a follow-up question just to- Okay, um, we can add, uh, definitely add the Michael's question and uh, add the link to the Kubernetes answer for it. So the so, question is the question is basically, what about PVCs which are labeled with the, this uh, CDI label? Uh, when uh, CDI, uh, when the API server is down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so like I would expect that those PVCs would fail to create, um, but if you had a PVC that did not carry the label, it would create successfully. Uh, no, if it will be, if it will, uh, if it does not have the label and missing some fields, they will, they will fail, of course. Okay. Really, I'm not, if there are missing fields, of course. For example, missing a, a access mode. Oh, okay. So or like regular validation. A, yeah, of course, with Kubernetes. And uh, for example, missing a size mode. So. Okay, but yeah, so anyway, I think we should get some, this would be good clarity because the precise behavior sure. that can be expected there is uh, critically important. Of course. Okay. Yeah, I think my point is, I think I want this, I think it would be best if this is uh, like opt in at every kind of level, you know, as in, um, you know, the, 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 
webhook is feature gated and each PVC has to be explicitly labeled. And then mm -hmm. uh, the behavior has to be um, documented as well um, because it, it, yeah, I mean, I think it was um, unsure to me and probably others that would be using this feature, how exactly it's gonna work. So I'm wondering if it perhaps makes sense to, to have a, uh, design proposal around this. Okay. And then just also a plan to figure out like how this fits in with um, like, um, yeah, I mean, if this is something we're going to be um, publicizing and um, I, I, yeah, I think it just makes more sense to, to have a lot of communication around this. Yeah, we've had a couple of, but by the way, Adam, regarding the second question, we know the answer, okay? Uh, there is no problem at all when unlabeled PVCs are uh, 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 created okay. when the API server is down. The answer is uh, in the PR, okay? Okay. That's for sure. Regarding the first one, I need to check it again. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. So I think the one, <clears throat> like, just to kind of agree with uh, Michael too, we've had a couple of false starts on trying to correct some of the um, uh, unfortunate behaviors of uh, data volumes with respect to uh, backup and restore and disaster recovery that's been discussed in previous calls. Um, this is an attempt to sort of uh, work around that by not needing data volumes um, by using PVCs, but still getting the like the lion's share of the benefit of the data volume. Um, but we just need to make sure like as we try to solve this problem that we don't just add uh, com like additional complexity or additional flows without actually really fully solving it because that just diverts our energy and that sort of stuff. Okay. It's a really cool idea and a potential great solution to the problem. Well, on the surface, it's the simplest one because uh, the other option is adding, you know, a CDI API for rendering it. And then you'll be, uh, you know, for example, for created PVCs, you'll need external tool uh, and so on. And you'll need, for example, from uh, Kubevirt to uh, use this API. Of course, we consider doing both, okay? But this one is uh, mm -hmm. really nice to have. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think we just, I think it's so nice that we should, um, that, you know, really have communicate, uh, communicate it and, um, you know, be clear yep. about what it does and, and, and and in part, so I think that will just make, encourage more people to use it, you know, the more comfortable they are with yeah. it. Because yeah. I think to, to um, you know, an admin or or someone that doesn't know too much and just be like, what, you're going to put a webhook on PVCs? I don't think so. But if it's, you know, if we can clearly document how it works and it won't screw up uh, other applications, that would definitely help. Okay. Yep. Sure. By, by the way, I, uh, I switched I switched by default to be used by all our uh, CI flows just uh, to get feedback, to, to understand if it really works on all the flows. Okay. Of course, I'll, I'll remove the label by default. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, in, at least currently. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, any um, other comments or we can switch to the next one? I just added some uh, some of my thoughts on the first uh, scenario. We should make sure, but as I see it, it should 100% fail. Like it wouldn't make sense if it didn't fail. Okay. Yeah. And that would be the desired behavior. So that's good. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, why don't we move on to the next topic? Okay. The next one is also uh, uh, regarding uh, the storage profiles. But much uh, simpler. Uh, we got an interesting Bugzilla, uh, but I'm not sure it's a real uh, use case. Uh, in the Bugzilla, uh, they were using the snapshot clone strategy, and uh, 
it did not choose the correct uh, volume snapshot class because there are several volume snapshot classes uh, with the same driver. And currently uh, we are looking for a match between the storage class provisioner and the volume snapshot class uh, driver. So uh, one of the options uh, proposed here is simply adding a snapshot class field in the storage profile. So it will make the decision uh, easier. What do you think about it? Do we, I just wanted to take a step back from this. Do we understand uh, what is the valid uh, use case of having multiple uh, you, volume You can open the Bugzilla. I think it's, the Bugzilla is public. I think you can open it. So I think the use case is similar to having multiple storage classes with the same provisioner. You have a parameters uh, field and you can have everything in there. You could have the way you, you create snapshots, for example. Mm -hmm. um, well, delete versus retain is one thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, there are just some parameters. And yeah, so right there... now it will basically... Um, if there's multiple, it will, I think, just find them all and then sort them by name and then just choose the first one. So at least it's yeah. deterministic, but it, yeah, it may not, it cannot, uh, you okay. know, what the user meant to do. Yeah. There is a so, concept. Sorry. Please go ahead. So uh, there's a concept with volume snapshot classes of a default volume snapshot class, just like there is with default storage classes. So if we want to start slow with implementing this feature, then maybe we could just respect the default storage class. Like, but honestly, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, uh, there should be a default. And I think we should treat this exactly like you do with a storage class. And so in your data volume or your PVC, you're expressing a storage class name if you want. And if you leave it out, then a default one is selected based on the semantics of the cluster. So why not have, hold on just a second, hold on, hold on just a second. So why not have the same exact thing and then have a field in the data volume if you want to override it to say the volume snapshot class name because when... i don't i don't sorry i think we're like uh yeah, sorry. the the one thing I, I don't think that the storage profile is the right place because who's to say that for uh an entire storage class you always want the i mean if the use case for multiple volume snapshot classes is to select certain options like retain or delete or if there's like a grade of snapshot or something like that, uh, this is not on a per storage class, but a, it, rather on a per snapshot uh, base that you would want to make the selection. So it needs to be in the actual request, not in the storage class, if you ask me. Okay. Um, I tend to agree. Okay, so over, override option in the material, but we don't want it to be in the data volume, of course, and because we add no new functionality to data volume, so it need to be placed in the PVC or something. Well, it's. I think it's actually so. I think the first step, as Alex suggests, would be to implement the def using the default if it's defined. And then the second would be to, um, I mean, I think it's a property of the clone operation. So if you are, um, if you look at the spec in the data volume for the, uh, like the source, I would say that you could put it as a field in there, and then that translates into the populator uh, CRs as well. Like you add the, it's a weird, it's weird to put volume snapshot class in one section and then storage class in a different section. But I think that's, I mean, we could discuss that in the PR. But I think that's where you would, um, where you would put it because it's related to the clone operation, and we can say that if. This the clone strategy that's selected is not a snapshot, then that field is ignored. But if it 
does choose a snapshot, then it would use that class. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I've been thinking about uh, the first bullet point. Is it a real use case for a few minutes? And I, I guess it is like you can always carve, like you could always see like a real setup where it has tons of parameters and stuff, but but maybe we would like maybe we want to take it slower like go with the CS cyclone maybe in those cases like delegate the responsibility somehow mm. instead of like yeah i think it's a really good question if it's a real use case because we make an ephemeral snapshot so the deletion policy is weird like why would you want to keep it yeah also i'm confused whether the uh, step snapshot the default volume snapshot classes per provision, or there can be a default, or if there's one for the cluster, which would be <clears throat> would break us in some. We'd have to understand what the actual low level semantics are for that, because we need to pick one that's appropriate for the provisioner. Right. Yeah, it's per per uh, cluster, I think. I'll yeah. So that out. doesn't that doesn't match if there's only one per cluster and there's multiple provisioners you could have you know two snapshot classes for what provisioner a and two snapshot classes for provisioner b but you're only allowed to designate one of those four volume snapshot classes as the default then if you're using the other provisioner there's no default so you're still broken yeah uh, and even for a single provisioner it won't help in the scenario in the Bugzilla itself, because they wanted the different uh, volume snap snapshot class for each one of them. Mm -hmm. It won't help the, the default again. Yeah, and it should be noted that this problem, I guess, would affect uh, like QVert uh, VM snapshots as well. So we need to think about we need to think about that use case. Okay. And that's not nice because you could have uh, you could have multiple VM disks on uh, different provisioners, so you'd have to be able to in individually request those. So, I mean, I guess that does make sense. Why um, this that does go as an argument back to using the storage profile because it would be simpler that like. If you have a weird uh, cluster with this weird configuration, you could set it once. But um, I also hate exposing this idea to admins who would have another place to set things. They're already using a storage profile for uh, you know uh, uh, specific specifying user defined. Uh, Right, but in the vast majority of cases, nobody has to update those, which is really good because they're they're able to be inferred, um, and it's only as a safety. But but anyway, the, for such case, they need some specific uh, connection to to add this link uh, between the two uh, CRs. So we provided the simplest way; they update it only once. Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's potential. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's potentially valid to have that updated, but then are we just okay to say that if you don't specify it, then a random one will be selected or or that will use uh, alphabetical order or, I mean, it's a, we have to, I guess we have to define the, the behavior. Yep. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments on how uh, ideas, um, suggestions on a path forward? I guess maybe we should take a look at what the storage profile option looks like. Um, 
but I think another thing that would be, I mean, this is my suggestion, of course, uh, just one of many potentials. Um, but I think that the volume snapshot class uh, should appear in the status of the storage profile so you can see which one it is selecting deterministically by default. And if you don't like it, you can override it just like the same as the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. And then, yeah, if, if I think that could maybe be the simplest. And if people don't like that, then, um, then we can try to address it in a different way with okay. like a data, a data volume level API or something. Cool, all right, any other comments on that topic? It sounds like we've maybe got a potential path forward or? Okay, um, I'm going to open up the CDI issues in a second here. Uh, I'm just cleaning up my tabs. Okay, CDI issues 2887. Okay, so CDI crashing when deploying to Kubernetes cluster using RKE2. I'm not even sure what that is. Um, if, if you look at that one, it is using Kubernetes 121, I think, with CDI 157. Okay. So um, I, I gave him versions to use for his particular version of um, Okay. Kubernetes. So can we close it? Uh, I think so. Okay. So I'm just gonna, yeah, looks like this can be closed. Please reopen. If you are still experiencing issues. Okay, let's go back to the issue. So this was 2887. And that is, I have to go down further. No, you have to go up. 2887. And there's only one newer one, it's 2894. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah. Um, wait. Yeah, but I mean, like in the list here. Um, okay. I don't know. Aren't, are, uh, We've gone through all the other ones last time. So. Okay, good. All right. Propagate labels from DVs to importer pods. All right. Um, so uh, it's a shame we don't have them on the call. I think it's the uh, get the name. Oh, forklift. I see the link below. Okay. So I think what they're asking for is a similar mechanism to what we have with like allowed annotations. So mm -hmm. there's like a set of four or five annotations that we allow to pass between the uh, DV and the pod. Mm -hmm. So um, some network ones like the STO one, and I think they can just capitalize on it. I linked uh, Alexander's PR with priority classes. Okay. And that's uh, the... Yeah, S seems like the way to go. But if, if this becomes like a use case, then we have a problem. We keep a set of like, we keep a specific set of allowed annotations mm -hmm. and we might want to open the gates uh, to everything potentially like make it user defined which annotations mm -hmm. yeah i like the idea of again like if we don't need an api or if we don't need something like I think I think it's makes sense to have it restricted down. I think the original worry was that um you could potentially since since the uh the labels are passed to objects that the user didn't actually create, that is there a, a possible uh escalation of any kind? So we wanted to 
uh, or unpredictable behavior. So we were trying to limit the surface of doing this uh, right. to things that we feel or understand the behavior for. Um, yep, that's a good point. Yeah. So I think Definitely. just being... Yep. And we haven't had a lot of requests like this. So, so far it's been pretty manageable. Um, so I think maybe the resolution here is to say um, to the reporter um, to let us know if uh, uh, the uh, do that see okay uh, so i guess that's all the uh issues for now um are there any other topics from anyone else who's joined today any like open floor type of topics going once going twice all right, well, I guess we've got uh, a wrap here. So uh, thanks everyone for joining and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.